Congratulations to Lalu and his new bride and, um, and to their wedding day and to their families. And they came in for a quick visit, so we wanted to get you that special announcement. And we'll also be getting the address and the office will send out an email with that information if you'd like to send a card or bless them as well. And then don't forget, sign up or call the office for details and to sign up for the financial freedom class. We offered it last year. It was a help to many families and it will be offered again in January. Mel will be facilitating that. And we're looking forward to offering that. If you're watching online or in the building, we trust that you'll take advantage of, of that important information and opportunity as well. Why don't you wave up at me? Those of you online, send out a greeting to us. We welcome you. This is our second service this morning. We're so glad you're watching online. And we thank God for all of you that are part of our church family. Also, you have an opportunity to connect or to donate online. The connect is for to give, you, give us information. We won't we will treasure that information. We will not overload it, but it gives us an opportunity to give you updates and keep you posted on things that are going on. It helps us to serve you better. In the building, you have connection cards in the seat or at the welcome desk. You could fill that out. It's helpful to us if you have prayer requests or if your information has changed, please update that information for us. And then, of course, there's offering envelopes in the building and online. There's a donate button. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your faithful support during all of these months. God has blessed us. We're almost coming to the close of our first phase of the renovation project. Your faithful giving has helped us be over the top with that, and we trust that you'll continue to be generous as you continue to make a difference uh, here, both in the building and outside these walls as we continue to minister to many people and bless people during this important time of the year. All righty, I want you to open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter. I trust that you'll follow along online or on the, in the building, and you'll study the Word of God with us today. I want to remind you, too, that the counseling ministry, Bethel has a counseling ministry. We have two uh, certified counselors uh, that are available. Both in-building and online options are available. Call and contact the office and let us know, and we can get you the information and get you in connection with that. This is a time of the year where people are going through some different difficult things. Maybe you'd like to talk to a Christian counselor, and we are thankful for that ministry that's part of Bethel Christian Church. Let's pray. Lord, bless your word. Bless your people. Bless the remainder of this service as we commit it to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Matthew chapter 1 will be our scripture focus today. You know, 2020 has been a year of shutdowns and cancellations. The other day, I don't know if you saw on the news, but the other day at a news conference, the mayor of Los Angeles, California, one of the largest cities in this country, um, was, was announcing some more shutdowns and some more cancellations. And he took it to this ultimate level where he made this statement, and I quote, he said, it's time to cancel everything. Well, I've got news, good news, for the mayor of Los Angeles, California. I've got good news for you this morning. I've got good news for the world today. Three words, can't cancel Christmas. Come on, can't cancel Christmas. Come on, say that with me. Can't cancel Christmas. I don't care who we are or what's going on in our world today. Nothing can cancel Christmas because Christmas is bigger than anything in this realm because God has a plan that's greater for our lives and for the world. You can't cancel Christmas. That's going to be the title for this morning, and that's also the title for the next three Sundays as we move to Christmas and as we share this short series with you. I trust you'll join us both online or in the building in our two different services for this important series. Come on, say it with me. Can't cancel Christmas. You know, when we think of Christmas, many people think of the carols, the family traditions, sappy Christmas movies, even the biblical nativity scene, 
We think of angels singing and shepherds in the field and magi bringing gifts. And all of that seems, when you think of those things, doesn't it all seem so perfect? It sounds so cute and cuddly, a baby in a manger and warm and fuzzy and nostalgic. But how many know a careful and closer look at the scripture shows us that that first Christmas was far from perfect? As a matter of fact, there were forces and there were factors that tried to ruin and destroy and defeat and cancel that first Christmas. But God had a plan. Come on, I said God had a plan. Can't cancel Christmas because God has a bigger plan. You know, even today, what's going on in our world, what may be going on in your heart or in your family today, how many know there are forces and there are factors that are trying to ruin Christmas for you, trying to cancel Christmas, trying to upset and, to, um, and distract you from the bigger plan and purpose of God. But how many know God still has a plan? How many know God is still in control? And God still has a plan. And then and today can't cancel Christmas because God is in control. And God has a plan. Here's the big idea for this three-week short series. It's this. Nothing, nothing can stop the plan of God. Nothing. Come on, let me say it again. Nothing. But pastor, what about, no, nothing. How about, no, nothing. Well, wait a minute, what, ha, nothing. Nothing can stop the plan of God. Jeremiah 20 and 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and harm you. Not to ruin or to cancel. Not to, not to destroy. But plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And you can't cancel Christmas because God has a plan to prosper us. God has a plan to give us hope. God has a plan to give us a future. Can't cancel Christmas. How many know you can't cancel Christmas because Christmas is bigger than our family traditions? It's bigger than the carols. It's bigger than the nativity scenes. It's bigger uh, than, than all of the things that we think of when we think of Christmas. Can't cancel Christmas because God has a bigger plan. And God's plan for Christmas is that it's the birth of salvation for the world and for you and I. And you can't cancel God's plan of salvation. It's bigger and greater than all things. How many know the message of Christmas is that nothing, not a pandemic, not shutdowns, not a cancel culture, nothing can cancel or stop the plan, the God's amazing plan of salvation for your life, for my life, and for this world and for all eternity. Now what we're going to do in this series is this morning and next week and the following week, the three weeks, we're going to look at three passages in the Bible. We're going to look at three people in the Bible. And we're going to look at three problems in the Bible that arose in these passages and with these people that tried to ruin or cancel Christmas. But we're also going to see God had a plan. And God still has a plan a plan of salvation for your life, my life, and for the world. Our scripture focus is Matthew 1 this morning. If you'll turn there and as we read verses 20, uh, or rather verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ happened this way. Your Bible might say happened on this wise or happened this way. When his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph and before they came together, she was found with child by the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to expose her publicly, so he had in his mind to divorce her privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him 
in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary as thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now this was all done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah back in Isaiah 7, 14, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and call his name Emmanuel, which interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph rose from his sleep and did as the angel had told him and took unto him his wife, and he knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. This week's theme is this. Each week we'll have a specific theme for the specific passage and person and problem that we're going to be dealing with. This morning it's this. No personal or family drama can cancel Christmas. No personal or family drama can cancel Christmas. Now I know nobody here has any personal or family drama. So, but you want to hear this message in case you ever meet someone who does, and you'll be able to help them with this. But how many know this morning, no personal or family drama can cancel Christmas? How many have ever seen a Charlie Brown Christmas? Okay. In the one scene, Charlie Brown is having trouble getting in the Christmas spirit. So Linus says to him, Charlie Brown... You know, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and make it a problem. Hmm. Now, the truth is this morning that not just Charlie Brown has a problem at Christmas time. How many know some of us may be facing some problems here at Christmas time? How many know the Bible tells us about Joseph? And this morning I want you to consider with me from Matthew chapter 1, first of all, Joseph's dilemma. Joseph's dilemma. Verses 18 and 19, which we read, tells us that Joseph was a good man, a just man, a godly man, but he had a big problem. How many could see that from the scripture that we read this morning? Joseph was a good man who had a big problem. You see, he comes home from his carpentry shop one day, and Mary meets him at the door and says, we need to talk. Now, how many know those are not always the best words to hear? We need to talk. And she goes on to tell him, I'm pregnant, and you're not the father. Now, if that isn't a big enough dilemma or big enough problem, then she goes on to say, God did it. The Holy Spirit made me pregnant. I mean, you don't hear that one too often. How many understand for Joseph, this was not shaping up to be a perfect Christmas? How many could see Joseph's Christmas was about to feel like it was going to be ruined, canceled? It seemed for Joseph that that night was going to be a silent night, but all wasn't going to be calm. And all wasn't going to be bright. You see, this is not how Joseph pictured his, the script of his life unfolding. And sometimes we look at our life today, we look at the world today, and we say, this is not the script I would have picked. This is not how I would have planned it. And we look and we think, my goodness, all of these things are going to ruin the plan of God. I want you to know today, nothing, come on, say it with me, nothing can stop the plan of God. Nothing can stop the plan of God. Could you imagine if this would have happened today? Could you imagine social media with Mary and Joseph? Oh my Lord. Now you know I'm not on most of the social media. I know the church, we put announcements or things like that. But could you imagine the public shaming of Mary? and jo- Could you imagine the cancel culture that would have rose up against Mary and Joseph? Could you imagine what was going on in Joseph's mind and heart? What was going on in their family, the personal and family drama that was going on 
this first Christmas, we look at Christmas and think everything was perfect. How many know it wasn't so perfect for Joseph? You see, Joseph's dilemma was threefold. It was personal, it was relational, and it was spiritual. It was personal because he had an internal battle with feelings. It was relational because he had an external battle with family. And it was was a spiritual battle because there was an eternal battle for his faith, what he was going to believe or not believe. You see, Joseph's dilemma is the same as our struggle today, asking life's or feeling or dealing with life's real and hard emotions. Joseph must have felt like you and I have felt, or may some even feel today, disbelief. He must have felt, and some of us today might have felt, hurt or rejection, anger, discouragement, fear, worry, shame, loneliness, frustration, despair. Joseph may have even felt a sense of loss and grief, and some of us today might be feeling the same emotions that Joseph did. Joseph's dilemma is the same as ours. Is Not only did he have to deal with some of these real emotions, but how many know he also it was the same as ours because he had to ask some of life's hardest questions. I think Joseph would have asked questions like you and I have asked, such as, is this really happening? Why is this happening to me? Did I do something wrong? What's going to happen with my marriage? What are people going to think and people going to say? How will, I, how will this affect my reputation? How will this affect my carpentry business? How will this affect my friends? How will this most of all affect my family? I can imagine Joseph asking questions that maybe some of us have had to ask at times in our life. Do I believe her or not believe her? Do I stay with her or do I leave her? How can I keep this private? What Am I going to do now? What about the future? Does God even care about what I'm going through? Am I crazy to believe this dream is really from God? God, is this really part of your plan? God, what could possibly be the purpose in all of this? I believe Joseph felt those emotions, and asked those questions. And you may be, this morning, feeling some of those emotions. And you may be asking some of those questions about your life and thinking, what can I do? What about my future? What about my life? Listen, no personal or family drama can cancel Christmas because God has a plan. I said, God has a plan, a plan of salvation for you and me and for the world and for eternity. You know, on one hand, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. But how many know, on the other hand, it's also the most difficult time of the year? Personal challenges, family conflicts, memories of loved ones that have gone on to be with the Lord different strain on our financial budget and all kinds of things that would try to ruin and cancel our Christmas. But I want you to know today that God has a plan. And while sometimes we can't sing tis the season to be jolly and we'd rather sing tis the season to be stressful, I want you to know that God has a plan today. And nothing can stop the plan of God. And God is still in control today. Because secondly, I want you to consider with me not only Joseph's dilemma, but I want you to see Joseph's discovery. Joseph's discovery. If you look with me at verses 20 to 23, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Aren't you glad that when we've got a dilemma and we're in the middle of a problem, God always shows up. And God is there. And God revealed himself to Joseph. And he came to him in a dream. And the Bible says the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and he discovered four important principles. Note this. Joseph discovered the peace of God. Joseph discovered the power of God. 
Joseph discovered the purpose of God. And Joseph discovered the presence of God. The angel appeared and said to him, Joseph, fear not God's peace. The angel appeared and said, Joseph, this conception is by the Holy Spirit, God's power. The angel appeared and said, she shall bring forth a son and he will save his people from their sin. God's purpose. And the angel said, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. God's presence. And I want you to know today that Joseph, in the middle of his dilemma, experienced and discovered the peace of God and the power of God and the purpose of God and the presence of God. And today, in the middle of our situation, in the middle of what's going on in the world and what might be going on in your heart and in your life and your family today, know today we can discover the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Know today we can discover the power of God which can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think. Today we can discover the purpose of God which works all things out for good to them that love Him and are called to His purpose. Today we can experience and we can discover the presence of God which will never leave us and never forsake you. I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Today can't cancel Christmas because God has a plan and God's presence and God's power and God's purpose and God's peace is ours today. Listen, when you and I in the midst of our dilemma discover the peace of God and the presence of God and the purpose and the power of God, how many know can't cancel Christmas, can't cancel God's plan for our life? Joseph's dilemma, Joseph's Discovery, and thirdly, Joseph's decision. Joseph's decision. Look at verse 24 and 25. Then Joseph rose from his sleep, did as the angel had told him, took Mary as his wife, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Come on, say that with me, Jesus. Come on, say it again. Jesus. How many know that's the name that's above every name? How many know that's the name that has power today? That's the beautiful name today. And when Joseph did what the angel said, and he called his name Jesus. How many know the decision to call the name of Jesus is always the right decision? And always a good decision, no matter what's going on in our life, in our heart. Listen, Joseph decided. Joseph decided. To believe the promises of God. And he decided to obey the word of God. Let me say that again. Joseph decided. He decided to believe the promise of God. And he decided to obey the word of God. Listen, Joseph didn't believe or do what made sense. He believed and he did what God said. Sometimes things don't make sense, but we still need to believe and obey what God said. Joseph didn't get swayed by all the other voices. How many know there were a lot of people who probably wanted to tell Joseph what to do and how to handle it and gave him all kinds of advice. Joseph didn't listen to all the other voices. He listened to the voice of God. Joseph didn't give in to the internal feelings and frustrations and fears. He didn't give in to the external pressures of people. He didn't play the blame game. He didn't wallow in his pity. He didn't withdraw from everybody. Joseph believed the promise of God. Joseph obeyed the word of of God. And listen, because Joseph believed the word of God and the promise of God, because Joseph obeyed the word of God, he became an instrument of a miracle. Think about it. Joseph decided, you're not going to rob me of being part of a miracle. You're not going to cancel my Christmas. You're not going to interrupt what God's plan is for my life. 
I'm going to fulfill the plan of God. And the only way we fulfill the plan of God is we believe His promises. And we obey His word. And when we do that, we can too can be an instrument of a miracle today. How many this morning want to be an instrument of a miracle? How many this morning want to see God do something great? In the middle of all this craziness, God wants to do miracles today. But we have to believe His promises. And we've got to obey His Word. Instruments of a miracle. When we believe and we obey the promises of God. Here, here's the bottom line. Can't cancel Christmas because of the promises of God. Can't cancel Christmas because of the promises of God. How many know the only thing that can cancel or ruin your Christmas is us not believing the promises and not obeying the Word of God. If we don't allow ourselves to give in or to give up, to listen to all the other voices, or if we don't allow ourselves to get distracted, but if we'll believe and we'll obey, we can be instruments of a miracle and nothing can cancel Christmas or stop the plan of God. I want to take a few moments in closing, but I want to take a mo few moments in Isaiah chapter 9. If you want to turn in your Bible to Isaiah 9 verses 1 to 7, or you can read it later on if you're watching online, I want you to focus with me for a few moments because in Isaiah 9, 1, 7, 1 to 7, it gives us and reveals to us prophetically the promises of Christmas. Hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, the prophet trumpets these promises of Christmas. He begins in verse 1 by saying, nevertheless, nevertheless, despite all that's going on in the world, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. I don't know about you, but how many are ready for no more gloom? No more gloom. What a prophetic word to us today. No more gloom to those in distress. Verse 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those living in the land of deep darkness, and that's us today, we're living just like they were at the time of the birth of Christ, a land of deep darkness. Listen, a light has dawned. Nothing can stop Christmas. God's light will shine in the midst of all darkness. Notice the two characteristics of the world at the time of the birth of Christ, the first Christmas. Gloominess and darkness. How many know that's no different than the world we're living in today? Gloominess and darkness. You know what I did? I went through and I read again the Christmas accounts. I challenge you to do that. And I discovered there were these characteristics of the gloominess and the darkness that was going on in the world at the first Christmas and at the birth of Christ, and that are still going on today. Listen to this. There was corruption in government. Sound familiar? There was violence in the streets. Sound familiar? There was injustice culturally. Sound familiar? There was poverty economically. Sound familiar? There was high taxation. <laughs> Remember? Caesar Augustus came up with the taxes and the high taxes. And, and listen, you know what else there was? Tragically, there was a legalized decree. A legalized decree to slaughter innocent babies. Yes, I went there this morning. What a tragic picture of the world, the gloominess and the darkness at the time of the birth of Christ, which is the same tragic picture of the gloominess and darkness of the world today. But in the midst of that, how many know these overwhelming problems cannot cancel God's overcoming promise because there will be no more gloominess. And the Bible says those living in darkness have seen a great light. And the Bible says those living in the land of darkness, the Bible tells us that they will, the light will dawn. Can't cancel Christmas because of the promise 
of God. Listen, the problems of the world can't cancel the promises of God. I mean, no, the promises came in the form of a person, a promise. Because Isaiah goes on to say, in the midst of gloominess and darkness, he says, for unto us, unto us, verse 6, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. Unto us, listen, we're the only ones that can cancel Christmas for ourselves unless we allow unto us be born a child. Unto us be given a son. You see, I want you to notice the distinction. The prophet makes a distinction telling us that two things happened that first Christmas. A child was born, but a son was given. Notice the difference. And I want you to see because a child born is speaking of the birth of hope for our gloominess. And a son given speaks of the gift of light for our darkness. I want you to know today that Christmas is more than just a little baby born in a manger. I want you to know that Christmas is about a savior, a healer, a deliverer a provider, a restorer who can be born in our hearts. Unto us, a child is born. Yes, there was a baby in a manger. But unto us, a son is given, the son of God who is the savior, the healer, the deliverer, the provider, the restorer. And he wants to be born in us. And he wants to shine his light in us. And he wants to turn our gloominess into hope, even in the midst of all the problems of this world. Can't cancel Christmas because you can't cancel the promises of God. There are three promises, he goes on to tell us in Isaiah, that come through this child that's born and this son that's given. Three promises. We'll put them up on the screen for you, the three promises. And I want you to grab hold of these promises today. Because if you have these promises in your heart today, nothing can cancel or ruin what God wants to do in our life. There's the promise of the width and the strength of his shoulders. What did the prophet say? This child that's born and this son that's given, the government or the weight of the world will be on his shoulders. Aren't you glad you and I don't have to carry that load? Oh, come on. Some of us have been carrying that load too long. And you need to know that there's one who will carry that load for you. There's one today whose shoulders are big enough and broad enough to carry the weight of the world. You know what Isaiah also said? The same Isaiah said, Surely he hath borne on his shoulders our grief. Surely he carried on his shoulders our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulders. And by his stripes we are healed. Listen today, you can grab hold of the promise of the fact that his shoulders are not only wide, but his shoulders are strong today. And he can carry any load if we'll cast those cares on him today. The second promise is not only the promise of the width and strength of his shoulders, but notice there's the promise of the height and the depth of his name. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. I want you to know he's the Wonderful Counselor today for our sanity. <laughs> I want you to know he's the Mighty God for our strength. I want you to know he's the everlasting father for our security. I want you to know he's the prince of peace for our overall salvation. Listen, there's a name that's above every name today. And it's the name of Jesus. And Jesus is our counselor today. And our mighty God. Our everlasting father and prince of peace. Notice the third promise is not only the width and strength of his shoulders, not only the height and depth of his name, but notice the promise of the wealth and length of his kingdom. It says the increase of his kingdom, there shall be peace and justice and righteousness shall he uphold, and there, his kingdom there shall be no end. 
Notice that his kingdom is a kingdom of increase. His is a kingdom of peace. His is a kingdom of justice and righteousness together. And notice his kingdom, there is no end and there is no limit. Today, if we will grab hold of the promise of God, nothing can stop the plan of God. Nothing can cancel the promises of God. You see, how many know Isaiah's message, prophetic message of Christmas wasn't, oh, cheer up. Let's all pull together and work harder and we'll solve everything together. How many know that's not what the message of the Bible was? How many know that's not, it sounds good as a slogan if you're running for office. Oh, let's all cheer up. Let's all pull together. Let's, let's everybody work harder and we'll all solve our problems. How many know we can't solve our problems? How many know the message that came from the prophet and the promise of Christmas was not that we can solve our problems. The promise is that a Savior is coming. The promise is a child is born. The promise a son is given. He's got big shoulders and he's got a name that's above every name and he's got a kingdom that will not fail and will win. And, he, and the promise that came to us is that if we we will surrender our life to the son that is born and the child that is born and the son that is given. If we'll surrender our life, he will solve everything. That's the message. That's the promise of Christmas that he will solve everything. He's the savior. An unknown author wrote this. I thought it was powerful. If God, if, if our greatest need was information, God would have sent an educator. If our greatest need was technology, God would have sent a scientist. If our greatest need was money, God would have sent an economist. If our greatest need was pleasure, God would have sent an entertainer. But because our greatest need was forgiveness, God sent a savior. What a powerful truth. The message of Christmas is a Savior is born. A Savior is given. And his name, come on, say it with me, is Jesus. Stand to your feet a moment. I want you to just bow your head a moment.